Hey, what is up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today we are going to perform stoichiometric calculations involving limiting reactants. What we're gonna do, let's do this. All right, let's break it down a little bit. First thing we're gonna do here in this video is we are gonna define what the heck a limiting reactant is. Two, we're gonna define what the heck an excess reactant is. And then three, we're gonna use our stoichiometry skills to do some stoichiometry calculations and determine the identity of a limiting and or excess reactant in a chemical reaction. So excited. All right, so for this video, there are pretty much just two vocabulary words that you need to be familiar with. The first of which is limiting reactant. And it is just the thing, it is the reactant that is going to limit, that limits the amount of the other reactants that can combine and the amount of products that can form in a chemical reaction. Limiting reactant. Wow, I wonder if they came up with that word. Uh, and two, we also need to know what the heck an excess reactant is. Well, an excess reactant is just a reactant that is not used up completely in a reaction. It is left over. All right, so we're just going to come back to this idea of sandwiches. Sandwiches! Who doesn't love sandwiches? Mm, mm, mm. So good. All right, so as we turn to sandwiches to once again help us understand what's going on with stoichiometry, I want to start with my recipe that I have here at the top of the screen. I need two slices of bread, one slice of cheese to make one sandwich. But let's imagine now that I'm provided with a certain amount of each reactant. Let's say four slices of bread and one slice of cheese. As you think about these ideas of excess and limiting reactants, always go back to your balanced chemical equation, AKA your recipe. To make one sandwich, we need two slices of bread and one piece of cheese. But as I look at the amounts that I'm starting with here, four slices of bread and one piece of cheese, I can only make one sandwich, even though I have enough bread to make two sandwiches. I'm limited in the number of sandwiches I can make by the amount of cheese that is present. After this reaction occurs, I can only make one sandwich, and I'll have two slices of bread that will be unreacted or left over, or in excess. Okay, now the same idea applies to chemical equations. Let's go back to the wonderful world of making water. Here, the mole ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in water is two to one to two. But let's imagine now that I've got four moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. I am limited in the amount of water that I can produce by one of these reactants. And as you think about which one, it always comes back to the stoichiometry in the balanced chemical equation. For every two moles of hydrogen, I need one mole of oxygen. As I look at what I have, I've got four moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen. I can use that one mole of oxygen to react with two moles of hydrogen to make my two moles of water as indicated in the balanced chemical equation. However, these two moles of hydrogen are gonna be left unreacted. They will be in excess because there's no additional oxygen to react them with. In a nutshell, excess and limiting reactants. Sandwiches! 